Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and the start of chapter or act two, depending on how you prefer to uh, denominate it or uh, whatever the word is. Uh, we are going to uh, go straight into the uh, most important thing here. We've got our first mythic level, so uh, let's uh, level up our characters. I mean, that is fairly important. And I want to have that done as soon as possible. We don't really have much of a choice now. Uh, it's Mythic Hero, but we've unlocked the Angel. Well, Angel and Demon are unlocked by default. We've unlocked Azata and Trickster. We've locked the a Aeon one. So and I don't know what would have happened if I had picked the Aeon. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have unlocked the Aeon storyline if I had done that one, but I don't know what what would have happened to the storyline if I had picked the Aeon choice at the Wardstone, so... We are going to go with uh, Close to the Heavens. Um, in truth, uh, Close to the Abyss might actually be better, since um, the um, additional gore attack is uh, actually pretty nice. But... Close to the heavens just feels more correct. It's kind of weird to be close to the abyss as an angel. So what we'll gain from this is the ability to unleash a ray of heavenly light targeting an ally or foe within 50 feet as a ranged touch attack. And it heals allies for 46 plus 2d6 per mythic rank points of damage. Or it can also deal that amount of damage to enemies. And uh, it can be used three times per day, plus one extra time for each mythic rank beyond the first, so up to a maximum of 12 times per day. And on the second mythic rank, we also get resist acid and cold 20, and an immunity to petrification. I don't remember if something actually does petrify, but... Uh, whereas the demons would give re resist electricity 20, and immunity to poison uh, But for these, yeah, I'm, uh, this one is nice too, of course, especially the uh, plus four bonus to saving throws against mind affecting effects. Uh, this one would be kind of in line. The Azatas are good, albeit chaotic good, but then again, Cal is neutral good. But we're going to go with close to the heavens. As for our first, uh... Mythic ability, we will be taking uh, Second Mystery, and we will be taking Battle. That'll give us a few additional spells for free. And I'll go through the Mythic levels before I level up the characters, because... Uh, Sometimes you don't get access to some feats if you don't do that. So the next one up is Sila. Uh, her first mythic level feat should be Ever Ready. Which is whenever she makes an attack of opportunity, there is a bonus on the attack roll and damage roll equal to her mythic rank. And the attacks, number of attacks of opportunity she can make each round is increased by two. So yeah, that one is also pretty nice. I missed the map. The next character would be Wolgith, whom we are going to give abundant casting. That is four additional spells per day. Stop clicking the map button. Then we have uh, Wally. Again, abundant casting. And leash. the four additional spells per day is for the first, second, and third level spells. Then you need improved for fourth, fifth, and sixth level, and greater for seventh, eighth, and ninth level. Lan. He's going to get everlasting judgment. You can now use judgment any number of times per day. And uh, his judgments are the ones that increase the... Uh, Chance to hit and stuff like that. Next up is Peps. Again, abundant casting. And 
that's the ones that I actually have. Uh, well, layouts of how I want to level them up for, because that is our core party. So for the other ones, uh, Nenio, uh, Abundant Casting, I know. Uh, Darren, I think I have a build of him here somewhere. Uh, second mystery nature which will give him uh, uh, an animal companion um, ember I have no idea we'll go with abundant casting and camellia I also have no idea I guess Second Spirit probably is the one that uh, guides would recommend to go with for her. But I'm going to go with Ever Ready for Camellia. I'll give her abundant casting later on. Okay, now the actual level ups. Level 6 Oracle. Uh, we get our skills. And our first level three spell should be prayer. Sila, level six, paladin. Get in our skills. And mercy should be diseased. Wolgif. Need to scroll up because he shall continue on his path as a vivisectionist. Put in the skills. Uh, as per spell, that is largely irrelevant. Then we have uh, Wally, I think. Level 6. Getting the primary skills. And I guess trickery no let's get use magic device here and haste definitely haste uh, and also greater magic weapon I think next up we have uh, Lan divine hound And a spell we are going to take on level 6 is Cat's Grace. Strictly not necessary because we do get that from uh, Wally, but at the same time it is useful to be able to self-cast it as well. Peps. Uh, get in these skills and uh, we want to take Fireball. And uh, again, we've reached the end of the line when it comes to the characters that I actually uh, truly care about leveling up. But I will do Darren properly. His level 6 is the uh, usual skills for him and a prayer as well. And then we have Nenio. Give her these. Level 3 spells here. Hmm, that is a bit more uh, interesting. I guess displacement. And... Sea Invisibility Communal. That seems like a good idea. Ember. Just continue on the Stigmatized Witch. I think... Sorry about the music disappearing for the moment there. Just checking uh, a guide. Uh, we want her to cackle. And as for the level trees, but level tree, yeah. The level tree spell should be Lee. Uh, let's go with uh, 
remove disease. And finally, Camellia. Quite useful in uh, regards to skill point, Camellia. And we have to also get the animal companions. Uh, but they only get skill points on level 6, so that is uh, a quick enough endeavor. So it's a little scrolling back and forth here. I think I have to sneeze. Indeed I did. Thankfully I managed to hit the un the mute button before. And that should be our entire party leveled up. I don't know if having these uh, expanded in the uh, camp uh, makes any difference. Uh, I should also go through our equipment and see if there's something that I want to put on people. Like this Cloak of Resistance plus 2, for instance, is uh, definitely something that I should be using on someone. Uh, most likely, I should be using it on uh, Sila, since she will be the one who is most up front in combat. Okay, now let's inspect the camp. Um, Yerbeth doesn't want to talk to us. Okay. Let's have our final chat with the uh, storyteller until chapter 3, if he has something to say. Yes. The old elf smiles when he hears your footsteps. Allow me to congratulate you on your victory on, on acquiring mythical powers capable of casting down the strongs of demons. Have you decided to join the crusade? I have decided not to, I'm afraid. My path and the path of the crusade lead in the same direction, but alas, they are not yet one and the same. After the demons were driven away from Canabras, the path into the world rune became open, if only temporarily. I'm planning on using this opportunity to visit. The elf fall silent. It doesn't matter now. I'd hate to bore you with the details of my venture, which may prove useless even for myself. However, I will try to return to the Crusaders and aid them in their confrontation with the demons after I'm done. I do hope to meet you again, in this world rather than the next. I got the page you were looking for from the Grey Garrison. The storyteller carefully takes the page from your hands. His fingers touch the ancient letters gently, examining them lightly, following their lines. I see myself. Young, energetic, able to see. Oh gods, have I found the key to my past? Finally, I will find out what my own mind has been hiding from me. The elf's expression becomes withdrawn. The wrinkles on his face soften. Thank you, Cal, and please follow me to my story. Let us embark on this journey together. The storyteller inhales sharply a few times and begins his story. They are leaving. The people of Kionin faced the coming Earthfall and admitted that they were incapable of handling this disaster. Proud rulers, artful crafters, brave warriors, wise mages, and skilled healers. All of them hurry to the gate of Sovirian, looking around fearfully. A clean, safe world is waiting for them there. My people decided not to fight for Galarian. I am ashamed. And I am sorry for them. Their hearts wavered in the face of the catastrophe. But my will is strong. I am staying. My kinfolk are looking at me angrily. How dare I diminish their decision with my recklessness? My choice makes them cowards, traitors of their own home. One of them, my former mentor, looks at me bitterly. He hands me a neat notebook with a tree bark cover, in case you change your mind. With a heavy sigh, he returns to the line of those departing. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. I watched the gate of the Severian stone close, separating me from them. It is time for me to go too. I open my master's notebook. These are his notes about travelling between worlds. 
in case you change your mind. He hopes the burden I shouldered voluntarily will be too much. I will lose heart and find my way to Severian. That will never happen. My mouth set stubbornly, I tear my master's notebook to pieces. I use my forced pride as a shield against my fear of what is to come. Why did the elves decide to flee and not fight? The storyteller's lips purse with disdain. They are afraid to lose what they have. They were rulers, long-lived and powerful. They valued their lives and sunshine too much to enter the fight with the aftermath of Earthfall. Your mentor is a mage? Then you must be too, yes? Yes. I am an archmage, and this title is well-deserved. I have acquired delicate mastery and succeeded in many areas of magic. But curiosity has always pushed me toward new knowledge since the first day of my apprenticeship. What is the Severian Storm? A magnificent crystal bent into an arch by a mighty hand of an ancient divine creator. Our great gate to other worlds. It breathes power. It dreams of eternity. Why are you angry at your fellow elves? I spent many hundred of year, hundreds of years in Kayonin. I have always admired the way my kinfolk cared for the forest that was our home. But the rest of the world seemed to mean nothing to them. But I love Golarion. All its places, all the forms it manifests in, all the forms it manifests in. I travelled widely and then came home and told my kinfolk about my travels. But they weren't interested. They only cared about Kionin. Their lack of desire to hear about the wider world makes me sad and angry. What happened next? Earthfall happened at night. I am standing at the top of my tower, many miles to the north of Kionin, and I see a blaze far in the south. I hear a horrendous rumble. The air is groaning, giving way to a huge rock rushing down on my world. And then, a blow. Vibration that penetrates everything, reaching down into the bowels of Galarian. And up to the vaults of the sky. Crunching bones, blood from burst vessels filling my eyes with darkness. Drowning in timelessness along with countless denizens of Galarian. Never before have we been so united in our feelings. When I come round, the darkness remains. My first terrible thought, I'm blind. But no, little by little I begin to see the stone wall. I am alive, but why is it so dark? The answer is quick. The smell of ash everywhere. The great burnt sacrifice filled the air with incinerated particles of what was recently the continent of Aslant. Great clouds of ash covered the sky, cutting us off from the sun and the moon, dooming us to dusk at day and complete darkness at night. My heart sinks with fear. Treacherous thoughts fill my mind. Why did I stay? Why didn't I run like everyone else when I had the chance? I clenched my teeth and stand up to watch Earthfall. Proudly, like the last Archmage of Kionin should, Will my world really perish like this? Will I perish? No, that will never happen. I am still alive and I can fight Earthfall and the darkness, not run from it in a blind panic like my kinfolk and my cowardly teacher. But what can I do? I will not stop the disaster. I will hardly be able to save empires from their destruction. What can I do? I am but one archmage, powerful and weak at the same time. What is Earthfall? A disaster of untold proportions. An unborn planet dropped on Golarion by blind fate or someone's evil will. A blow so strong that the continent of Aslant is destroyed within moments, turned to ashes, wiped off the face of Golarion. In this burnt sacrifice, clouds of ash and dust are born, stealing our sun. Without the warmth of our star, the air cools, the soil is barren, dark creatures crawl out of their lairs to rule, and the most frightening thing? Without the sun, all hope dies in the heart. This is the Age of Darkness. 
What was that tower you mentioned? It's my retreat to the north of Kionin, my home away from home, my observatory. From its top, I watched the stars, and uh, when they were correctly aligned, the other worlds as well. Here, in the northern wastelands, I found the highest mountain and built a tower on top of it. On clear days, I could see the mist over the lake of mists and veils in the east. That is how high I was. What are you going to do next? I don't know. I need to think. My opponent, Earthfall, is much stronger than me. Without noticing, the storyteller raises his voice to a shout. It is merciless. It does not simply destroy life. It kills an era, ending the greatness of Galarian civilizations. They will sink into oblivion, be forgotten as if they never existed. I need to think. The elf suddenly winces and is silent for a few moments as he calms his heavy breathing. Forgive me, I shouldn't have raised my voice. This story was much harder than many before it. Most likely because I played the main role in it. It is so strange to see myself, feel the emotions tearing me up inside. Those that I felt a long time ago and not remember them. It's like I split. I became both the storyteller and the main character. Too bad the story ended at that moment. Please, if you find other pages covered with ancient elven writings on your travels, bring them to me. I might be able to shed some light on my past and we will find out how my story ended and perhaps even why I forgot it. I'm going to click this and go through that just to grey it out in the uh, conversation menu with him. Thank you for your stories. Thank you for helping me remember them. Uh, I don't think this one has anything new. No. Good. I wish you the best of luck on your travels. And I wish you interesting adventures. Okay. Uh, so we are going to just explore the camp. I think we are going to have to have a couple more conversations. Um, of course we are going to do things. I mean, it would be weird if I didn't loot things. People would probably be very, very worried about my uh, state of mind. Hey, I don't think I found that before. Not that it was a critical thing to find, but... actually uh, brings up the uh, idea that it... Why is there a summoned small earth elemental down there? Oh, they've used it to dig the ditch. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have earth elementals doing construction work for us? This part, I think the characters, our party members, will just have uh, minor uh, comments for us now. Um, let's go into Nura Dendiwar's tent. This is Nura Dendiwar's tent. It seems she has brought a lot of unnecessary items along with her. And we are, of course, going to relieve her of the said items. Tyler is the uh, Pathfinder guy, so I, it's interesting that they have uh, added things like that into the uh, lore books. This is something she had written herself. I'm amused that Irabeth is just standing there looking at me looting everything in Neura's tent. Although it will become even more uh, amusing. In the next tent. Seeing as the next tent is actually the Tirabate's tent. So it is her tent, together with the Nevia. 
This is mine and Anevia's tent. We are both used to traveling, but the queen insisted our tent be furnished like a commanding officer's. Briggy the Sausage Maker. That sounds like a great Fearless Crusader. Oh, thank you. I like that half plate of vigor. I'm sure Sila will uh, enjoy that. This massive bed is clean and neatly made. Only commanding officers are allowed such luxury during marches. Don't need that. We are going to take the other stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Erbeth. That was most accommodating of you. Okay, let's go to the other part of the camp. Examine the campsite of the Canabras Knights. I haven't explored things like this behind the uh, edges. You might find things here. Journal. Find the location of the recruits in the Erosian and talk to the army court to master. Okay. Erebeth must be quite confused as to why on earth is he rummaging around out here. Uh, three cold iron swords, that's nice. We can pop into the chapel tent. We outfitted this tent to be used as our chapel. Even the less pious crusaders will come here to say their prayers when the final battle is upon us. I have seen it happen in my previous campaigns. The Altar of Sarenrae, the Healing Light, the Goddess of the Sun, Healing and Redemption. And then we have the Altar of Torag, the Father of Creation, the Dwarven God of Craft and Kin. Altar of Rastil, Old Deadeye, the God of Hunting, Farming and Quiet Pastoral Life. Altar of Desna, the Great Dreamer, the Goddess of Freedom, Travel, Luck and Dreams. This place has been sanctified, so we can rest in the Crusader camp without getting abyssal corruption. And of course, finally, the Altar of Iomedae, the Light of the Sword, the Goddess of Justice and Valor, and the Patron of the Crusades. Cold Iron... Cold Iron Masterwork? And then we have the uh, field medic. This is the field hospital. Alas, the clerics of Canabras suffered especially heavy losses, so we are in desperate need of healers. We are few, but the gods are with us. The prayers of good people around the world are with us. Yeah, groan, groan. This is where Camellia is. Uh, there's a book, Confessions of a Heretic. I think we've got that before. I wonder if he has the same things that I sold to him in the last chapter. No, they are gone. Um, I expected to be toast. I'm just quickly browsing through here to see if there's any. Yeah, the icy protector is actually. Uh... No. I'm thinking of something else. Plan of inspired wisdom. Scroll, scri scroll scribers kit and alchemists kit. If you wanted to do that. Oh, glowing poison. This one. We definitely need to get this one. Uh, I'm just going to buy it right away because otherwise I might forget it. Uh, this is one of the most powerful items in the game, uh, to be honest. It's particularly because of the uh, ability uh, that it grants in form of Hellfire Ray 3. Mm. 
this works for spontaneous casters. I actually think I can put it on Caledon himself. Uh, and as an oracle, I will get access to these spells. Uh, but Caledon is not the one that is going to be using it. At least I think not. Or, no, I think I will put it on Peps. That out of the way. Kiado is here. I don't think there's anything else of interest in here. Just continue on down this way. Here is Arakel and Sila. Cold iron. A group of soldiers is talking loudly. Laughing joyfully and passing around a flask. So, picture this. My sword is by the fire. There's two goblins about to snatch it, and three more are digging through my tent. And I'm sat in the bushes wearing just my mail shirt, wondering what the blast to do. An old mercenary taught me about the mail shirt. You can't sleep in armor, but it's not so bad in mail once you get used to it. Too bad no one, no one told me not to go into the bushes without my sword. So, what did you do? What did I do? I barked like crazy. The goblins are afraid of dogs, you know, so they all went wild and started running around. I spot my sword and they spot me, so I jump over to the fire, wearing nothing but my mail shirt, and I grab my sword and I yell in my big tough voice, Oh, Inheritor, grant me the power to crush these filthy creatures. My sword's shining, the goblins are screaming, I jump to attack them and they fight back. But I fought them off somehow. But ever since then, I never take a step without my weapon. Sila takes a sip from the flask. Uh, that's some story. Hey, stop. Stop gulping. Leave some for us. We've only just set off and you're already drinking? And with a queen in camp? Stop this at once. The knights quickly snap to attention. Sila raises the flask and says loudly, Right you are, Commander Tirabade. We are but drinking to the queen's health. Sila shows some discipline. Sila becomes serious and puts the flask away. My apologies, Commander. That's better. You're a paladin in an army, not a mercenary on a raiding party. Make sure you act like it. I hate to ruin Sila's fun there, but again, I need to level out the uh, lawful and the chaotic decisions that I make. Um, if you look at the character, you can see that I'm fairly in the middle, maybe leading towards chaotic. So, uh, and I want to stay here. I'd rather not go into local or chaotic. Okay, nothing up here. Sorry, this might not be the most uh, entertaining thing to watch, but... Just want to make sure. Here's a page. Okay. Well, the prelate is dead. The queen is not, however. I wonder where that came from. As in, who wrote that thing? And genuinely, I do wonder. Yes, I've played some of the game even into Chapter 5 before, but I don't know who wrote that note. Ah, uh, and here's the theatre. A well-dressed old dwarf is lecturing a motley company, shaking her, shaking her ladle at them belligerently. Noticing you, she flings up her hands. G g good afternoon, your commanderness. Do you remember us? We're the crew from the next door theatre company, the one you saved in Canabras. I wonder what this one. Oh, it actually does show the right thing here. Back when you weren't your commanderness yet. As you can see, we've come on the campaign with you. We signed up to clean pots and mend the soldiers' clothes. Keeping up a theatre is expensive, so we all have to take side jobs. But we don't stop what we're doing. 
and we are going to put on a play about your legendary feats. Now, of course, the crowd scenes are difficult. We can't find the people to play the hordes of demons. And we decided against using a ritual to summon real demons. Thank Iomide for that. Luckily, we have Master Kem. He's invented a way to solve this problem using sound. We caught a pig and some piglets who ran away from a burned-out village, the glum and husky half-orc mumbles softly. We put the piglets in a box and uh, scare them a little, and the sound they make is just like an approaching demon horde. Interesting. You learn new things every day. But the most important question is, of course, choosing the lead actor who will play the Great Knight Commander. We had a right Barney over it, breaking a number of lances as well as a shovel, a rolling pin and a set of back scratchers. But we just couldn't decide, no matter what. Maybe you can help us? We have two candidates that are most suited to the role. One will have the honor of conveying your heroism upon the stage, Commander. I'm to be played by a gnome? Not a gnome. Two gnomes. Rubbledum and Har Harifant are twins. One of them sits on the other's shoulders and puts on a long coat so they can play tall characters. They switch places every so often, so each get their moment of fame, and that way they each only have to learn half of the script. What's up with this Cyclops guy? He's completely tame, believe me. Has a few issues with articulation, but what a powerful physique. We'll make him a nice costume, wash him up, brush his hair. Truth be told, in our show, you mainly just make short heroic exclamations at the fateful moment, like Onward, or We'll never give up, or My heart burns with courage. Lampkin can definitely handle the script. Don't you have any other actors who even vaguely resemble me? We're a small and uh, poorly funded theatre, and we only have a few actors. But they're all so talented. One of a kind. I've chosen the ones that are the best fit for your role. Trust my vision. I have more than a few successful plays under my belt. Alright, I've made my decision. The entire crew looks at you holding their breath. You're the, di you're the director. It's your choice. Wonderful. Sorry we took you away from all the important things heroes and commanders do. We're off to rehearsal. I mean, first we'll wash some pots, and then we're off to a rehearsal. Let's go, you lazy lumps. Don't embarrass old grandma now. <sighs> yep. I don't think that needs any uh, further uh, commenting. Did I find... Yeah, that was the uh, encounter with Sila. Uh, Jernau is here. Good day, do you remember me? I'm Jernau. We spoke in the Defender's Heart. So you're the commander of the Crusade now. Erastil knows it's hard to imagine someone worthier of taking up the post than the savior of Canabras. May the good gods help you prevail. Have you joined the Crusade? Don't take it amiss, but no, I haven't. I have my own task. I am needed in Chilly Creek, a tiny hamlet, which, due to some oversight, has been left without a priest these many years. I'm about to set sail for there, and I'll be making my journey along Old Man's Cell. I wish you a speedy journey, then. May a rustle watch over you. What are these guys up to? Yes, yes, three cheers for the commander. Now answer my questions. Where are the male shirts? According to the paperwork, we're supposed to have 50. I personally deposited the money for them in the army's treasury. He's funding the crusade? The burly soldier with an impressive beard greets you with a broad smile. Will Sir Garns, the camp quartermaster at your service. How may I be of help? Uh, I'm going to just quickly scroll through the tell me about yourself thing here, in case any one of you are interested, but I won't read that out loud. So, this, and then that. Um, the same goes for the duties at the camp. 
And of course, what the soldiers think about me as their new commander. And he also is a vendor, so he sells and uh, buys stuff, um, which is useful. Uh, and that's all our tasks that we need to do before we talk to the Queen. And I think we've actually done everything that I wanted to do. No, there is this thing. Ah, ah there you are, you dashing troublemaker, you. Darren flashes you a self-satisfied smile. Our short acquaintance is coming to an end. Very soon you will depart on your crusade, where you'll scrape by on horrible rations, struggle vainly to fall asleep amidst snoring soldiers, be rudely awoken by the freezing cold, and have to look upon the dour faces of self-righteous prigs, before you finally perish in the maw of some demon. I have a journey ahead of me too. I've just rented a sailboat in the south. I've also hired an excellent chef. And a host of other entertainments. Well, to each their own, I suppose. Darren pauses, then suddenly adds in a more serious voice. You know, I am genuinely sad to see you go. If it sounds like mockery, forgive me. I cannot switch off my venom gland on a whim, you see. But you intrigue me. If we only could have spent a little more time together. But of course, not under these conditions. I'll let the Crusaders and the Demons have at each other. With any luck, they'll take this entire sanctimonious spectacle, spectacle down with them. Mm. I'll be polite. If you feel you don't belong here, then go. But I would like to see you again someday in the future, to get to know you better. How about you throw a banquet for me to celebrate our victory in Dresden? What do you say? Victory in Dresden? Your optimism is so charming. Darren smirks, then seems to start slightly. He continues in a more even tone. Well, should you prove lucky enough to survive by some miracle, come and find me. Perhaps I shall even remember you. No promises, though. In any case, I intend to wait until the army departs. I do love a good send-off, especially when it is I who is staying and someone else who is heading off to meet a dreary and hopeless end. Sometimes it does one good to ruminate on the unfairness of life. Well then, farewell, Commander. I assume I shall be your most precious memory on this most disgusting and exhausting road to the pointless slaughter of battle. Or, if not the most precious memory, then at least the most stirring? Darren smirks before instantly losing all interest in you. Or at least he pretends to. Yeah. You can always wish, Darren. You can always wish. Queen greets you with a stare. She has dropped the pompous air which, with which she just announced the Fifth Crusade. The face of the ruler of Mendev appears calm and thoughtful. She has made her move and now awaits her opponent's reply. Rook from c2 to um, d4? No, that's that's rook, so uh, c, c2 to c4. Commander, I'm satisfied with the troop review. But I do not expect they will be sufficient for the task. You will have to prove yourself a shrewd leader and hire the necessary troops with the provided funds. I have chosen a target for your campaign, and that target is Dresden, our lost outpost within the world wound. The Sword of Valor was kept there, a banner that was once carried by Iomede herself. Our greatest relic was lost when the city fell. I should make one thing clear from the start. The Sword of Valor is no mere symbol, but a powerful weapon against demons. The holiness of the banner weakens them, and robs them of one of their most dangerous abilities, teleportation. I am dreadfully sorry, but I have to pause the recording. Briefly. There we go. A forced march to Dresden awaits you. The Sword of Valor is kept somewhere within the Citadel, the demons probably think it's a hunting trophy. 
Its recovery is just as important as retaking the city itself. I hope the task is clear. I'm sending two specialists to help you, along with the soldiers. A historian, Nura Dendewar, and a cleric, Sozul Bainik. One of the famous inquisitors at the Church of Iomade also wants to talk to you. The Honorable Leota, whom everyone calls Hawkblade. I do not wish to keep you, Commander. The matter I must discuss with you is extremely important, but it is not directly related to the Crusade. You no doubt wish to meet your new comrades and speak with Her Majesty. Therefore, I shall leave you now, but I ask that you seek me out in the camp at your earliest convenience. Hi! Listen, it's amazing here. It's like I'm in a ballad. There's knights in shining armor, deadly dangers, glorious feats. We are going to show those demons. I'm so tired of sitting in a library reading books about history. It's time I took part in it. <laughs> That's a little bit enthusiastic for joining a crusade against demons. I'm glad to help our cause, Commander. If you have some time later, I'd like to speak with you further. You'll have plenty of time to talk. You're the Knight Commander's people now, his trusted advisors and companions. Now then, will you please leave us? Erebeth, you can go too. When we met at the Defender's Heart, I never imagined you'd make me the commander of the new crusade. Some actions may be deemed bold, or even extreme. And beyond those, there are some you might call the Queen's last resort. I am not a simple monarch. I am at war with the Abyss. A war which has lasted over a hundred years. I cannot allow myself the luxury of caution. In you, I see a chance. And I am willing to stake everything on it. However, you cannot blame me for putting you in charge of the Crusade. I only formalized what had already happened in the hearts and minds of many. People spoke of the power that descended upon you and helped you save the Wardstones from corruption and total destruction. Word of this feat quickly spread far beyond the borders of Mendev. There was no other person who could better fit the role of Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Hmm. I wonder how that particular uh, statement would have uh, been if I had chosen the Aeon path and destroyed all of the Wardstones simultaneously. Um, but that is just me musing here. Uh, did you know that the souls of angels from heaven are confined in the Wardstone? I had guessed as much. Many angels fought alongside us in the First Crusade. Heaven was unable to mobilize its full might to aid us, but individual Celestials volunteered to fight for our cause. Then one day, they all vanished, saying that they were setting off on an important mission. Not long after, Iomade's Herald erected the first Wardstone in Kenobris, and then the others in cities across Mendev. Even back then, I had nagging doubts. But my faith in Iomade easily assuaged them. It is for us to serve the Goddess, after all, not to question her works. Blind faith, Queen? Nevertheless, I am pleased that you solved the mystery of the Wardstone in Kenobris, and were able to save this gift of Iomade. It was a deed worthy of a Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. You should know that I received an unusual gift in the caves beneath Canabras. In a vision, I saw the death of an angel called Lariel. Somehow, he was able to grant the ability to reveal the light of heaven. Lariel? I knew him. He disappeared shortly before the world wound grew, and Dresden fell into the enemy's hands. In the chaos, we had more important concerns than investigating the fate of a single angel. Even one so righteous and beloved as Lariel. And afterward, matters took a turn for the worse. The angels left us to go on their special mission. It is so strange to hear the names I used to hear when I was young. Like getting a message from the past. It is sad news, but it brings me back to the times when we strongly believed in our victory, and we rushed headlong toward it without fear. Could it be that such times have come again? I have some questions about my mission to retake Dresden. Of course. I shall answer. How did the demons manage to, to capture it? That's a good question. Its walls were built by dwarf craftsmen, and the power of the Sword of Valor protected the city. Alas, 
Where raging hordes failed, a single line tongue was all they needed to succeed. The demoness Minago convinced a young and ambitious crusader named Staunton Bane that the banner belonged on the battlefield. He went on a daring and unapproved raid, and the banner ended up in the enemy's hands. The city fell soon after. Ever since then, for seven decades, it has served as a citadel for the forces of the Abyss. Staunton Bane. I saw him at the Grey Garrison. He defected to the demon's side. Oh, really? I wasn't informed of this. After Dresden fell because of Staunton, he was nearly sentenced to death. He deserved it. In wartime, men are hanged for far less. But you have no idea what a terrible sight it is. A raging crowd of crusaders baying for blood. Never have my fighters looked so much like the demons we are fighting. I commuted Staunton's sentence and stripped him of his rank. Not just for him, but for my army and my country. We are not Hell Knights. We do not maintain discipline with public executions. You punished him with a life of disgrace and humiliation, and that life finally broke him. It is sad, but not surprising. Perhaps exile would have been a more merciful sentence than decades of service among those who despised him. I was hoping he might atone for his guilt with a heroic act, but he likely decided that atonement was impossible, and he might as well give himself over to evil. Yep, that is exactly what he did. What forces are at my disposal? Everyone we saw today at the parade. First among them, the Eagle Watch, who remain a powerful force thanks to Erebeth's resourcefulness. Also marching with you are several minor knightly orders, as the minor volunteer units like to be called. And finally, I have personally selected some recruits from Nerosian. They have little in the way of battle experience, but great determination and a thirst to prove themselves. I've always thought that an army benefits from at least one such unit. These forces, as I said, are not enough for a march on Dresden. You will have to hire additional troops with the funds that have been provided to you. But for a brave commander, and I hope you are one, that is just the beginning. If you retake Dresden, recover the holy power of the Sword of Valor, and gain a foothold in the region, then new armies will join under your banner. The Fifth Crusade is only beginning. Many battles and victories lie ahead. She's certainly optimistic about this. It's been decades and no one has managed to retake the city. Now why do you think we are different? We have a chance now that we haven't seen in decades. But it's more than that. You created this chance for us by foiling the demon's plans in Canabris. The army who attacked the city came straight from Dresden. Demon hordes from the Abyss are usually encamped there, but many of them perished on the streets of Canabris. We must attack swiftly, before they can restore their forces. When the city is free and the Sword of Valor appears before our soldiers, they won't be sending in any more reinforcements. Demons cannot teleport into an area protected by the Banner of the Goddess. What about long-term goals? Do you know how to get rid of the world wound at all? Now you are talking like a real Knight Commander. However, answering your question is not easy. To win this war, we must bar the demon's way. There are a few planar rifts leading to the abyss across the territory we call the World Wound. The best specialists we could find have tried to close them on separate occasions, with no success, as you may have guessed. The World Wound is more than just a chain of portals to the abyss. We do not understand its nature yet. The methods of rift closure known to magical science simply do not work here. However, we have a hypothesis, and a rather well-grounded one, that we must begin at the source of the problem, the place where the world wound was opened. The main rift lies through the city of Iz and the Threshold Fortress, deep in the former lands of Sakoris. We have never managed to fight our way so far and gain a foothold to allow the mages to explore the origins of the world wound. So, the next step, after you succeed in Dresden, is an offensive push deeper into the World Wound, with the aim of reaching Threshold, the very Threshold of the Abyss. 
curious that they had that name for this fortress. I have no more questions. Wonderful. What are you going to do? Overlooking a spot of insubordination just at the moment. However, I shall answer you. I shall prepare the defenses at Nerosian and all the other border cities and plan the future of the Fifth Crusade. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Knight Commander? Yes, but uh, my queen, I would ask that you remain with us. The Dersen campaign is the hope of a crusade, and the blessing of Iomede that you carry may be decisive in this battle. Do not pick this if you want to go with the swarm that walks past. Sigh here? A polite attempt to appeal to the conscience of an old sovereign? I don't know if you realize what you're suggesting. If our enemies in the depths of the wound were to discover that I was with your army, they would immediately send their most vicious demons to attack. They would stop at nothing to be rid of me, and thereby sow chaos across Mendev. But, you are right. I shouldn't be sitting it out in the rear. I am a warrior queen, and a queen of warriors. Yet my fighters have forgotten what I look like. Fine. I shall join the crusade, but on my own terms. First, I shall assemble my entourage and lead the parade out of the camp. I shall catch up with you later, along with a few hand-picked bodyguards. We'll change our armor, and I'll become a knight of a minor order and join the troops incognito. Until we approach Dresden, no one should know I am among you. But before we storm the city, I shall show myself to the troops and join the battle. Let it be a surprise for the demons. I hope you won't complain of my company on the road, Commander, since you were the one who insisted upon it. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? No, I think that about sums it up. The task is clear. Splendid. Ah, yes. We have one final matter to attend to. It should be rather enjoyable. Indeed. Count, there you are. You received my instruction? I did, though I did not have time to read the thing before I was dragged before your majesty. In truth, I was readying myself to depart. No matter. I trust you will forgive your sovereign for the rather brusque summons, especially when you learn what prompted it. As you are aware, he has recently been appointed my Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. I spent a long while pondering whom to appoint to the highly sensitive post of Commander's Field Attaché and Advisor Plenipotentiary without portfolio. Congratulations, Count. It is a great honor, I suppose. That's a great idea. I knew you would approve, Commander. I had my doubts about whether you were ready for such a responsibility, Count. But your conduct in Kenobris has put my mind at ease. So, you will travel with the troops to Dresden. Only the Commander may remove you from your post. But I trust that you will dutifully fulfill his orders and make a good showing of yourself. <laughs> Especially since word of your appointment, Count, will reach the court at any moment. All of Mendev's nobility will be following your successes in service to the nation, including all of your devoted admirers. I even heard that one bard with whom you are particularly friendly has already begun composing a ballad to honor your heroic participation in the crusade and your faithful service to the commander here. Your largesse truly knows no bounds, dear cousin. I am most, most gratified by the honor you have shown me. Mm-hmm. Then let's get going. May Ayomade help us. And, uh, yeah, that's about, uh, that particular, uh, little interesting spat. Anevia sweeps an inquisitive glance over you. So, tell me straight, how did that brawl at the Grey Garrison end? I heard the rumors, of course. That's kind of my job, you know, to listen. You've no idea what cobblers the Crusaders say about you. Some say that Iomede came to you and appointed you her herald. Others say that you died, and an honest-to-God's angel is now leading the army disguised as you. Still others say that it was just an explosion at an alchemist's lab, and I'm the one spreading you rumors about your powers. I wish. But you know, you really have changed since the Grey Garrison. 
It is hard to describe, but you become kind of... And Nebia waves her hand, trying to find the word. None of these responses are in uh, character for me. Um, I'll go with stronger. More dangerous. I have a gut instinct about these things. If I didn't, I'd already be dead. You are dangerous, Commander, and by Desna, I hope you'll be dangerous to our enemies and not to us. Or to yourself. She's still nice to us, though. I'd like to pick the loot from that thing. Yeah, I'll take that since we are in camp and I'm going to sell stuff in between episodes now. Well, that is a fair amount of stuff. No, I'm just going to take it all because I'm going to sell it outside anyways. I think I'll run around the camp and pick up everything uh, so that there's no loot markers left. This is the chest where the items from the inn will be stored. You know, we are at the one hour mark. Uh, there are a couple more conversations that I need to do. Uh, Leoter, Hawkblade and Sosiel uh, in particular. But I think we'll do that at the beginning of the next episode instead. And then... After that, we'll uh, head out of camp and into the uh, larger world. As mentioned, I'll go around and pick up all of these uh, loot items, and then um, I'll do some uh, selling. Um, I'll, sell, I'll sell any irrelevant stuff to the uh, blacksmith guy here. Uh, and relevant stuff I will sell to uh, to Wilson Garms, as he's going to be uh, carried through to the next act, although I doubt that any items I sell to him will be um, carrying over, just like the stuff that uh, was given to uh, Vizali did not carry over. But with that, if you have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you all in the next episode.